So the first enteric virus that we're going to talk about is the enterovirus poliovirus. And polio is a hardy, meaning that it can survive in many different environments. It's a hardy, non-enveloped, positive, single-stranded RNA virus. It has a capsid with icosahedral symmetry, and it's almost entirely eradicated thanks to vaccines, but it's still important to learn about. So what does poliovirus do? Do you know? Well, you might think of FDR paralyzed in his wheelchair, and indeed, poliovirus can cause paralysis. In the last video, you learned that poliovirus is an enteric virus that replicates in the gut. So how do these things go together? So let's go through it. Infection with polio starts when the virus comes in through the mouth, the viral travels down through the stomach and into the intestine where it infects epithelial cells. And the fact that it goes through the stomach again means it has to survive in very acidic environments, and indeed it can actually survive in a pH as low as 2. So how does it infect epithelial cells? Well, it binds to a certain receptor called CD155, and then gets its RNA into the cell, and then starts making proteins and replicating. So what is CD155? Well, it's a surface receptor that's important in making structural connections that hold adjacent epithelial cells together. So it gets into the cell, and then what does it do? So inside a cell, its positive single-stranded RNA can be directly translated into protein. So it translates some protein, and then its genome replicates using its own RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. So new viral particles are assembled, which then lyse, in other words, kill the infected cell. And this lysis releases many viral particles. So some of these are going to go into the feces, and others are going to stick around in the interstitium around the cells that it infected. And so what happens to fluid and other material in the interstitium? Well, it gets swept into lymphatic vessels and passes through the lymph nodes nearby. And eventually, all lymph gets dumped back into the blood. And so through this mechanism, poliovirus gets into the blood. So we call that viremia, where emia means it's in the blood. Okay, so we still haven't mentioned anything here that has anything to do with paralysis. But now we're finally there. Because once the virus is in the blood, it goes all over the body. It could theoretically infect anything. And in some very unlucky people, one in one or 200, it gets through the blood-brain barrier and into the central nervous system and starts infecting neurons. So does it infect any neurons? Well, no, not quite, because we know poliovirus mostly causes paralysis, not dementia or sensory loss or something else. So we can reason out that for some reason it likes motor neurons, not sensory neurons or other neurons in the brain. And indeed, it mostly replicates in the lower motor neurons and infects their cell bodies. So where are those? Do you remember where the lower motor neuron bodies are? And this is a lot of detail, but as you'll see, it's good to know. So the lower motor neuron cell bodies are in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. So here, this stuff is all axons, this stuff is all cell bodies, and the ones up here are the motor neurons. Now note that this is the spinal cord. These cell bodies are in the spinal cord. And what do we call inflammation of the spinal cord? Myelitis. So when poliovirus infects the spine, and causes paralysis, we call it poliomyelitis. You might have heard that term before, and now you know where it comes from. So there you go. We've talked about how we go from infection in the GI tract all the way to paralysis.